This world-renowned heavyweight boxing champion's journey from being a victim of bullying to being an anti-bullying advocate is truly inspiring. I was uh, bullied a lot as a kid and uh, my father saw what was happening to me because my first bullying experience, I got my butt kicked on the playground by a, another kid that just so happened to be a girl. And uh, she beat me up pretty badly and uh, my dad saw that and he said, no son of mine is going to uh, be uh, embarrassed like that. So he uh, took me from the playground to the boxing gym and that's where I spent every day after school was, uh, was in the boxing gym, but um, it didn't stop. The bullying persisted throughout my life up until about high school is when I really turned a leaf and, and uh, started, um, I, I kind of came became the bully myself. It was a uh, direct response to what was happening throughout my, my younger years, adolescent years. And uh, the boxing gym is what saved me from drugs and suicide and depression. After his first win at around the age of 14 or 15, David knew what he wanted to do in life. Yeah, that's, that's when it proved to me that, that I was on the right track, that you know, all the days in training that I sacrificed, you know, running away from kids from the, at the bus stop and, and, and getting bullied that finally, that's really the turning point of my life when I turned a new leaf and said, okay, now I can do it. Now, now I can be, I can go, I can go follow my dream and be a champion fighter. From that moment on, his career as a professional heavyweight boxer skyrocketed. He won fight after fight. The way I made a name for myself was I was knocking everybody out. Um, I was just devastating. I, I had power in both hands. Uh, I mean, and I was just racking up the first round knockouts. It was like something that people have never seen before. And uh, my management um, moved me correctly, had me fighting all over the country, all over and out of the country in Mexico. And uh, I just kept putting these guys out faster and faster and every time they increased the opposition I would knock them out even faster so I was really making a name for myself with the first round knockouts I could punch with both hands. But during his peak something life-changing happened. It was a brutal knife attack experience in 2011 that turned his life upside down. I walk out of the club and I hear footsteps behind me just these thugs surround me and I see in my peripheral, peripheral vision this neon light is flashing and then I see a shiny object and right when I right when I caught my eye it turned and boom it slipped my throat that right there it slipped, slipped the whole slipped my whole neck open uh, I lost two and a half pints of blood I think close to I'm not sure I can't remember exactly but it went from like a rolling cinema to pictures I always knew I put myself in those situations and I take full responsibility for what happened in my life I knocked out, I, you know, for all purposes and reasons, I should have been dead. Wake up a day and a half later in the hospital with 369 stitches in my face. However, this didn't stop him from fighting for the top 10. After that, I, I, did, I, I didn't want to lose my top 10 ranking and, or the, I was on medical leave actually in the WBC. I was in the top 13 in the WBC, top 10 in other belts. I went right back into fighting, and I think I went in mature, prematurely, and I got knocked out. And when that happened, my whole world blew up. My whole world just uh, exploded in front of my eyes, and I went from hero to zero, and um, fell into a deep, dark depression. At this point, David's life as a boxing champion had slid down a dark path, something he could have never imagined. I had no purpose anymore. When, when I was done boxing, when, when I lost, I was as good as dead. I just wanted to die. I um, honestly, uh, I went through a state of depression that lasted about four years, and it was just, uh, it was dark, man. It was like, I, the best way to describe it to people is, after my last loss, it was like I was put out in the ocean, in the, naked in the cold, on a boat with no compass, no paddles, nothing, just left there to die. That's how it felt. Um, I didn't have a direction. I had no purpose. It was just black all around me. I didn't want no family around me. I didn't want to go out, I didn't want to do anything, so I turned to the bottle of drinking, and I did, and, and I started using, having drug use, and and uh, drinking more alcohol, and, and my life started spiraling viciously. It was during this dark time that David was able to reflect on his life. He shared his experiences in a raw and honest book entitled, When the Lights Go Out. This is when he found the light again.
I was so dark and depressed that for four years, that transformation happened. For four years after my career, I just wanted to die. I was only staying alive because I didn't want to, I didn't, I already died almost twice. And I just felt like I didn't want to let my family down. I want to let my parents down. You know, I already lost my sister. So my sister passed away. So I didn't want my parents to lose another child. And, um, but little did I know God was actually working in my life. I started speaking to schools, to kids. That was therapy for me. And I wrote the book, When the Lights Go Out. When I wrote that book, When the Lights Go Out, it was during the darkest time of my life. So when people read it, they see the most raw and real David Rodriguez because that's when I was at my darkest moment when I was writing that book and I was reflecting on everything in my life. David bounced back and found his new purpose. Through using his personal story, he has been able to help kids by establishing the nonprofit organization KO Bullying. Yeah, the KO Bullying started um, from a friend of mine that uh, was doing basketball camps in El Paso. And he came to me and he said, hey, man, dude, uh, you know, he knew I wasn't doing anything. He knew I was just sitting around doing nothing, just being depressed, drinking alcohol. And he'd always come to me and say, hey, man, listen, you know, I, I have a basketball camp for kids. They'd love to hear your story. You know, you're still a hero in El Paso and people want to hear from you, this and that. And I was like, man, nobody wants to hear from me. I lost. I'm done. I'm washed up. And he came to my house one day, made me get out of bed and go speak to these kids. So. I did. I put on a suit, made myself look fresh, although I was still dying inside. Went and started speaking to these kids about my life and about how I was, how I was bullied. I'm doing one after another, one, one presentation after another, and I'm making these kids cry and laugh. And then I started feeling better, like, man, I'm really helping kids. I'm really helping someone here. And I started realizing I was touching one soul at a time. And I would have kids come up to me and hug me and start crying, you know, and they would tell me how they wanted to take their life and how they felt those levels of despair. And when that started happening, I realized, okay, God is working in my life. Something's going on here. Something is happening here. The mission statement for KO Bowling has always been my testimony. I've been there. I've, I've been through the, I've been bullied. I've been beat around. I've been, I've felt those levels of depression. I've, I've felt uh, I've had those traumatic experiences, you know, that people, some people don't feel they can come back from. And I've been there and I've done it and I came through and I became a, a champion, a heavyweight champion boxer, six belts. You know, at the end of the day, I still had one of the best records ever. I don't think any, anybody's even beat my, tw my 25 first round knockouts. So I still have those notches on my belt. And if I was bullied and I was picked on, yeah, when you're going through hell, keep going. In other words, when it's, you know, or it's better to die on your feet than to live a life on your knees. And we're all gonna face hard times, but it's how you react to it, you know? You can't sometimes help what happens to you, but you can help how you react to it. And when you're going through hell, keep going, just keep moving those feet, you know, um, because it will get easier. Uh, tough, pe tough times don't last, tough people do. You know, I can go all day with these things. <laughs> But, but uh, you know, those are just a few that come to my mind because, listen, we're all going to be faced with challenges and you, all, you always just got to keep moving forward, man. That's it. Just keep moving forward. Keep your eye on the ball. Today, David and K.O.'s mission is to continue helping children realize their potential and to use their hardships as a way to teach humility and build character. I, I'm here to help kids. I'm at their service. We haven't made a dime on it. And uh, it's always a standing ovation. Kids love it. They get to hold the championship belts. They take pictures with them. And uh, that, is, that is so fulfilling to me, man. It's just so, it's so great to see kids smiling. And, and I can see the kids when I'm talking to which kids have been affected, you know? I can see which ones are desperately dying inside. And when I start to see them smile by my, by my embarrassing stories, and I start to see these kids smile and, and um, like understand that I went through it too. Man, that is the most, uh, that is the most fulfilling part of the whole journey, man, right there. Until about a, about a year, I would say about a, a year and a couple months ago when I snapped out of it and I found a new purpose to live, you know, and I just realized I quit drinking, I've been sober and I, um, I turned my life around and, and, and I'm a new person today. I'm a different person today. And I'm so happy that God worked in my life because if he can change me, he can change anybody. Let me tell you that right now. You may feel like you're in the darkest and in the most, you're in a level of despair you can never get out of, but you can, you always can. And I'm here to tell people that 
anybody can rebound in life and come back and find a new and find a new purpose because I did. 